All right, guys, I'm going to give you my raw, honest opinion on some of these Black Friday deals for 3D printers and what you should be asking yourself before you hit that buy now button. So things like, you know, is, is this thing actually a good deal or is it going to be something that I'm going to regret buying in the next couple of weeks because it's a headache, because it's falling apart, because it's breaking, because it's junk. You know, I'll, I'll go check out some of the other best uh, Black Friday deals, see which ones are actually worth the money and which ones that I would personally skip. All right, if we haven't met yet, I'm Dan. I run this channel. We talk about all things 3D printing, content creation, photography, videography, all that stuff, uh, gear that you'll actually use, functional things that you print, 3D prints that you can use around the house. I also own a media company, so there are things that can... Uh, and incorporated that. I bought and tested a couple of printers at this point, and I've had the cheap ones, and I've had the high-end workhorses. Mid-range is kind of where I'm, uh, I'm looking to get my next one. I do have a couple of rules that um, I want to make sure that I stick to when I'm looking at these deals on 3D printers. Before we start naming names or anything like that, let's let's go over them. So the first one is going to be the printer's got to be good even at full price. I'm not going to buy a printer as garbage at 400 bucks for 250 bucks just because it's, you know, it's on sale. If it was garbage at hundred bucks, it was garbage at 25 bucks. It's garbage at $400, it's garbage at $250. It's not gonna change just because they put it on sale. So rule number two, right? The discount's gotta be real. A lot of these brands, what they'll do is they'll take their products and in, you know, September, October, they're gonna bump the prices up. And then when November rolls around, they're just gonna pretend, oh, we're giving you 30% off. and. I care about how the sale price compares to the normal street price, not their inflated big red numbers that they're going to give you, you know, X amount off or, or whatever. I'm looking at you, you green. Rule number three, it has to match where you are in the hobby, right? Because a crazy fast printer might be the wrong choice for somebody who's just getting into, into the hobby. And then a rock bottom beginner printer it's going to be a waste of money if you need to add a couple of printers just to, you know, expand your print farm or something like that. They're going to be more hassle if they're going to be more hassle than than spending the money on a better printer. They're they're not worth it. It's worth it to spend the money to get what you need. So I'm going to try to keep those things in the back of my head um, as we look through these specific printers, and hopefully you will too. And that way you'll be able to sniff out the fake deals, even on the stuff that I don't mention here, even if it's not 3D printing related. All right, so let's start with the budget printers. And this is where I think most people are going to be doing their shopping. They're looking to get their foot in the door and you know really start to see what this 3D printing is all about. Um, it's going to be their gateway drug to get them into, into this uh, hobby. These are perfect if you're buying your first 3D printer or if you want a cheap second machine just to tinker around with, something that has some other options, and which you currently have doesn't. Um, my recommendation right off the rip is going to be the A1 combo. That's what I got. That was my gateway drug. I wish I had gotten this these amazing deals on it, but even the A1 Mini, these, these are great printers. Um, there's a lot of negative talk about Bamboo and their ecosystem and how they're like Apple and they're trying to lock you in. Don't listen to that right now. Everything, everything is working great. I'm not locked into anything. I can use whatever filament that I want. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have to use their slicer, but I have no problems using Bamboo Studios. So if you want to stay out of the Bamboo ecosystem, there are a couple other options and examples for you. So things like the Creality Ender 3 V3 SE, whew, you got to work on those names. It's dropping around to the, uh, I think it's the low 200s. It's on sale over four right now. The Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro is often showing up around the $200 mark. And printers like the Creality K1 SE or the Creality High are sneaking into that really aggressive promo pricing. And those are some decent printers. There are a few things that actually matter in this price range and things that I'm going to look for to make sure that the printer has. I want to make sure that it has auto bed leveling or at least assisted bed leveling. Fighting with the bed on your first printer is how most people quit this hobby. Most of these new ones will have that, but just keep that in mind. Also, out-of-the-box success. You should be able to get a halfway decent benchy as soon as you set the machine up and print it out. You don't need to be calibrating this. You don't want to be adjusting that. For those people who are just starting out getting into the hobby, you just want to pull it out and go. Another big one here is community and support. So are there a bunch of YouTube videos out there and people talking about these printers or about this brand, how they can help, how they can fix it? Or are they posting on the forums? The community for... 3D printing has been an amazing community, a lot of people helping a lot of other people out. So if you buy a printer that's an off-brand or a no-name or something that's cheap, you're not going to find a lot of information about it. But if you buy something like a Bamboo or a Creality or um, Algoos, one of those bigger brand names, 
there's going to be somebody out there who's had one or had the issue that you have or has the questions that you had, and they're going to be able to help you answer those. So if you're looking at something like the Ender 3 V3 SE or the Elegoo Neptune 3 series printers, and it's a little bit below the usual street price, and it's got reviews and an active community, then that's a legit first printer and a good Black Friday deal in my book. So this next category is going to be your mid-range deals, your, your serious hobbyist, your second printer, third printer, fourth printer. You're, you're running a smaller print farm, something like that. You're, you might be selling stuff or making things at a craft fair, but you're not making them on a large scale. This is where you're going to want to be. So again, this tiers for you if you already own a basic printer and you want to upgrade or you're a little more serious about it now and you don't want something that you're going to outgrow in a couple of months because you've already got that one that you have outgrown. That's why you're here, right? You're looking for that second printer, that third, fourth, fifth, sixth. You'll know what I mean. All right, in this price range, I'm going to be looking at things like the Elegoo Century Carbon. Um, it's dropping from the low 400s into the high twos, the low threes. Uh, some of the beefed up Neptune 4 and Neptune 4, 4 Pro style machines uh, when they go on sale. Also, the Bamboo Lab P1S, now that the P2S has come out, that's a really good deal um, on that printer, especially if you get it with the uh, with the combo. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a real workhorse for you. Now, you can also look at some of the more refined bed slingers and more refined enclosed machines that have the better motion systems in them. Um, but I would probably stick with the with the P1S in this price range. Again, I'm a bamboo fanboy. It's what I know. I'm not saying that any of the other ones are bad, but it's what I'm comfortable using. So when you're buying at this tier, a couple of the things that you're getting are you're getting less frustration. You're getting more throughput. Um, you're getting better hardware. They come with things like the uh, direct drive extruders. Um, you're going to get improved hot ends, more rigid frames, things that aren't going to be moving around and breaking on you as much or as often. There are quality of life upgrades with these. And so you're going to get some quieter operations. The printers are going to be quieter while they're operating. You're going to get better screens. That's not one that's a big one on my, you know, for me, because I don't often print from the screen on the printer. I usually print from the slicer. Sometimes I will print from my phone too. And uh, maybe an enclosure or an easy path to one. Some of these bed slingers or the open frame machines that don't have the enclosures, you can you can either buy one or some of them you can even print. So that's a that's a very good option for you there too. So again, if you're already printing a lot of things, then these mid-tier Black Friday deals. On things like the Neptune 4 Pro, the Century Carbon, the P1S, they can literally literally double your output compared to some of the cheaper printers on this list just because they move faster, they print better, and they don't break as often. So they're going to be up and running more often. All right, let's talk about some of the big dogs because I know a bunch of you here are eyeing those. I'm one of them. So this is going to be your high-speed, multicolor print farm category. Uh, prices are going to be a little bit higher. But Black Friday actually matters when you're knocking a couple hundred bucks off a machine that's a couple thousand dollars or more. That that can be a bigger bigger deal. One that I would throw in this category would be the X1C, the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon with the um, with, with the AMS system. You can get you know, a couple hundred dollars off it, and there is a coupon code that goes along with it that that makes this one a pretty appealing deal as well. If you want to print those, um, if you want to print more engineering grade material, um, you can also look at things like the Anycubic S1 combo, even the Creality, the K series, the K2, the K2 Plus combo being bundled with the with their AMS system, CMS, AMS. Uh, I can't remember what they call it. But with the with the uh, Creality with the with the K2 Plus combo, you can bundle that stuff with their AMS system. You can bundle it with their, you know, extra plates, filaments, things like that. So sometimes you can get a better deal if you you know bundle a whole bunch of things together. You can also look at things like the multi tool machines, like the Snapmaker A350T. Um, it's losing a couple hundred bucks off the sticker price. The uh, H2D. Um, I think you're knocking a couple couple hundred bucks off of that one too. I'm not sure with the laser combo, but you might be able to uh, get a get a deal on that as well. I did get an email today about the announcement for the H2C, uh, the event that's going to be in Frankfurt. Might be an interesting trip. So who should be looking in this category? If you're, if you're already printing consistently, um, if you care about the speed, the quality, and the time that you're going to save, you might be selling prints, you're doing client work, you're, you're planning to do a small print farm, something like that is where you're going to be wanting to spend the money here. 
even though you're getting a deal, you're going to be spending a little bit more money. What you're really buying in this tier, again, is, is the speed. You're going to be able to crank out the parts way faster, and they're not going to look like trash. They're, they're going to be quality prints. Automation. Everything is moving to automation, right? So you want auto calibration, auto flow, bed leveling, multicolor, AMS. All these things are niceties. You don't have to have them to print, but they make your workflow moves so much faster that in my opinion, if you are going to be doing this as a business, even a side hustle, those are the things that are going to help you succeed faster. Another thing you're getting at this price point too is going to be the ecosystem. So when you're spending the money on the higher end stuff, you're getting things like the slicer, the app, um, it's going to come preloaded with the uh, different filament profiles and the hardware that actually plays nice together. Some of the parts on some of the printers are actually interchangeable. So that's really nice. I know with the new system with the uh, H2S and the A1 swapping out those hot ends, it is extremely easy. It takes about, I don't know, 30 seconds. It takes a little bit longer if the hot end is actually hot. Let it cool down before you do it. I might have less fingerprints now because I was a little impatient when I went to change one out. But either way, it's really, really easy to do. Now, look, if your printer is a tool for the work that you actually do for YouTube, Etsy, local clients, then a good Black Friday deal is something like one of these high-end combo machines. It's it's literally going to pay itself back with the time and the output and, and the lower frustration that you're going to have. So let's talk about some of the printers that I would skip, okay? A couple of red flags, if you will. So the first red flag is gonna, there's gonna be no no real reviews. It's just all the promo crap that they that they throw out at you. If the only person that, if, if the only people that are talking about these things are the sponsored reviewers, and there are no legit, hey, I bought this with my own money, or anything like that, uh, videos, posts, um, forms, anything like that, then I'm gonna be suspicious of it, and, and I'm not even gonna give it a try. There's so many other good proven printers out there that it makes it hard to go with something that's that's just coming onto the market, especially when it doesn't have the backing of a community. Red flag number two is going to be the feature slop. Um, so if the listing screams things like, you know, it's auto everything, RGB lighting, AI cloud magic, but the reviews are, you know, I got it in the bed was warped. Um, I called customer support and they were ghosting me. It was hard to get a hold of them. Um, the hot end keeps clogging. I don't care how cheap it is. It's not worth it. It's not worth the price. It's not worth the frustration. It's not worth the, not worth the hassle. It's going to make you not want to print. And red flag number three is going to be random no-name Amazon brands. Like, I don't know how many other people are like me, but I just, if I scroll on my Facebook feed, I get Amazon's number one best-selling 3D printer. Click here. I, I, I don't care, okay? If I've never heard of the brand and there's no, again, there's no ecosystem behind it and you can't find replacement parts, profiles, it, it might be an expensive doorstop in a couple of days it, if, it, if it even works at all. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip that all together. And, and look, remember, you're not buying, you're not just buying a printer, you're, you're buying the workflow. You know, does the printer help you print more? Does it help you print with less hassle? Or is it going to be one of those projects where the printer itself is the project? You're going to be working on the printer more than you're actually going to be working on your prints. Those are things that I keep in mind when I'm shopping for anything, not just 3D printers, but for anything. All right, so let me wrap up a couple of things here. So where would I fall or what would I buy in these three categories that I've given you? Um, given what the Black Friday sales are so far. In the $300 first printer curious beginner price range, I'm going to buy the Bamboo Labs A1. I'm gonna get the A1 combo. That was my first printer, that was my first step, that was my first gateway. I would recommend that to anyone. And if, if the A1 combo or A1 itself is still out of your price range, I would recommend the A1 Mini. It has a smaller build plate, but it has the same build head. The printer itself is built a little differently, but it is still an amazing printer. You're still going to get the ecosystem. And if you want to add the AMS later, you still can. It's a great printer. Don't pass it up. So in the $300 to $700, the Serious Hobbyist is second printer. So in the $300 in the, in the $300 to $700 Serious Hobbyist second printer price range, what am I going to buy? I'm going to buy the P1S. Again, I'm going to sound like a bamboo fanboy. It's what I know. It's what I like. They have great reviews, and it's a it's been a proven workhorse. Now, a little bit less than that, you can look at something like these the Elegoo Century Carbon. That one is very appealing. It's a one color printing machine, 
but you can use um, more engineering grade materials. So a, a reason that I would buy in this category, and that I'm probably going to buy in this category, is because I already know that I love the hobby. Um, I want a reliable printer. I want the higher speeds. I want less babysitting. And I want the proven workhorse. Something that's proven that it can work is important to me. So now in the $700 and up price range, the print farm, side hustles, uh, creators, things like that, you know, I would be looking at something like maybe the X1C. I would probably spend a little bit more and go to another H2S or even spend a little bit more and go to the H2D because that one's on sale. The H2S is not on sale at, at this time. It is not on sale. So if you're printing to sell or you're consistently running jobs, um, buying speed and automation here is often smaller than buying, you know, a couple of uh, cheaper printers that you're going to be working on or babysitting or, you know, whatever over, over the course of your print. I want to spend the money to get something that I can set and forget. A question I'm going to ask myself at any budget is, is this deal going to get me a printer that's going to fit where I'm going to want to be in the next six to 12 months? Or am I just buying the cheapest thing that's on the page? That's how I look at these Black Friday deals on 3D printers. Not just what's on sale, but what's actually worth the money based on where you're at on the hobby. A couple of things to think about. Deals are changing constantly. So before you check out, just make sure that the printer is good at full price. Make sure that the discount is real and it's not some inflated price and they show you a big shiny red 30% off sticker. And ask if this is where you're going to be in the next couple of months or if this printer is going to help you grow. If you want to see some of the best Black Friday deals that I've personally found within the last couple of weeks and how they stack up, check out this video. Whatever corner it's in, I always forget where to point. Or if you already have a printer or you're about to buy one and you want some ideas on things that you're actually going to want to print or things that you'll actually use, I got another video over, again, over here or over there, where it's packed with a bunch of functional 3D prints and projects. So your new machine's not going to stay... Um, stay idle and just sit in the corner and look pretty. You can print out things that you're actually going to use. So again, I'm Dan. Thanks for hanging out. Happy printing. And don't let their marketing department sell you and make your decisions for you. Make sure you do your research and buy something that's going to be worth the money.